ancestors, Abraham, and to his descendants forever. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Well, there is nothing like a song to transport you to a different place and time. Summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime. That takes me back to days of my youth traveling in our Oldsmobile station wagon uh, on vacation. Or hit me with your best shot, right, Pat Benatar. Yes. Right, thank you, all right. <laughs> Sends me back to my days of goalkeeping when I played field hockey in college and in high school, hoping that people wouldn't hit me with their best shot, but anyway. <laughs> And of course, the Christmas carol, Ding Dong, Merrily on High, which we don't sing very often, but that takes me back to the balcony of First Presbyterian Church in Bangor, Northern Ireland, for their annual carol service. There are songs that make up the soundtracks of our lives. Music transports us. It encourages us. It moves us. Music helps us to hope when all hope seems lost. Music helps us to find joy in our despair. Music helps to give us courage to speak the truth. Perhaps that is why so many athletes have their own mix of songs they listen to before they compete. Right at the Olympics, everybody wanted to know uh, what was on the athlete's playlist. Perhaps that's why when a speaker is introduced, that there's an inspirational and uplifting song playing as they take the podium. Perhaps that is why when there are no spoken words, we find ourselves singing words to familiar hymns. You know, the first few chapters of Luke's gospel is full of songs. Zechariah, the husband of Mary's cousin Elizabeth, sings after the birth of his son. They were among the first words that out of his mouth after he was struck mute by the angel Gabriel for not believing that he and his wife would have a child in their old age. And we know well of the heavenly chorus of angels that sing to the shepherds abiding in the fields. That song spurs the shepherds to go with haste and find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And then Simeon, to whom the Holy Spirit revealed that he would not see death until he had seen the Messiah, Simeon breaks into a song when he sees Jesus as Mary and Joseph bring him to the temple to present him before the Lord. And then, of course, there is Mary's song, which is actually the first of the songs in Luke's gospel. That's four songs in two chapters. Luke knew that songs have the power to speak for us and to us. Luke knew that songs have the capacity to shape us and to shape who we know God to be. So I'm wondering, what do you suppose were the songs that Mary sang to Jesus as a child? I mean, it seems pretty clear that she sang songs like the one she sang in our reading for today, named the Magnificat because of the first line, my soul magnifies the Lord. Commentator Caroline Lewis speaks of Mary's influence on Jesus' life and ministry. She says, maybe it's true that you can learn something from your mother. Jesus' understanding of his purpose for ministry restates his mother, mother's understanding of God's working in her life. Jesus senses the essence of his ministry because he learned it from Mary. Jesus isn't just making stuff up. He's giving voice to how he grew up. He's articulating what he's been taught. He's known this from the beginning. It's what his mother preached. It's what his mother lived. It's what his mother taught him to be. It's how his mother interpreted scripture. It's what his mother shared about who she knew God to be. It's what his life of faith embodied. Jesus can witness to the God he knows because he heard his mother give witness to the God she knew. You know, in the Gospel of Luke, when Jesus preaches his first sermon in his hometown, right, he opens up the scroll of Isaiah, those words are so similar to the words in Mary's song. That sermon is so similar to the words that Mary sings in our lesson for today. Well, many of us have heard the song, and we love the song, Mary, Did You Know, right? It's a beautiful song, wondering about what Mary knew about who Jesus was and, and what he would do with his life. 
And while the song never actually answers the question of what she did or didn't know, it does portray her as slightly passive and, and submissive. And, and don't get me wrong, I love the song. It has a place in the soundtrack of our common life, but we must also include the song that Mary sings herself. A song that is prophetic and radical in that she faithfully sings about the power of God to set the world aright. The question is not so much, Mary, did you know, as it is, what did Mary know? And I think her song clearly answers that Mary knows that the birth of her son would transform the world, and that is powerful. Mary, lowly Mary, not the mother meek and mild, but the mother who knows that the child she is carrying will usher in a new world order where those who are left behind by society or invisible to the powers that be, it is also to those poor and downtrodden people to whom the kingdom of heaven has come near. Mary's song makes it clear that unlike the rulers and kings of their day, God cares about the poor and oppressed. God has looked with favor on the lowliness of God's servant, Mary sings. And she sings from her own experience. She isn't singing about something that she knows nothing about, right? She knows what it's like to be poor and oppressed by the powers that be. As commentator Rolf Jacobson reflects, think about it, you're poor. You wonder, why? Why are we poor? Maybe it's just the way things are, you think, or, or maybe you hear that kings and queens rule by divine right. God wants them to be rich and powerful and you to be poor. Or maybe you hear the poor are poor because they did something bad in a previous life. They deserve to be poor in this life. And if they suffer their poverty bravely and gladly, they can be born into a better caste in the next life. Or maybe you just think we are poor because we aren't smart enough to be wealthy. And he goes on to speak of the power of Mary's words. Mary's psalm, he says, announces no. Christ has come to challenge the structures of sin, death, the devil, and oppression. Christ has come in the strength of the Lord to do what the Lord has always done. Lift up the lowly, free the enslaved, feed the hungry, give justice to the widow, the orphan, and the sojourner. Mary sings her song in a world where the weakest members of society are lifted up and God's mercy is showered upon everyone. And while our circumstances might be very different than Mary, the mother of Jesus' circumstances, and while our world is unimaginably different than first century Palestine, we, God's people living in the 21st century, are in need of songs to sing. Like Mary, we must sing songs that give voice to power, the power of God to overcome fear and hatred that have manifested themselves lately in hateful graffiti on mosques and churches and even one of our own schools that have encouraged people to say ugly and hateful things to one another, that have emboldened the bullies among us. Like Mary, we must sing songs that give voice to love of neighbor and those who are different from us. Like Mary, we must sing songs that speak of the transformation of a world where me and mine is the order of the day to a world where we live out our commitment to the common good for all people, especially the least of these. And we have these songs in our soundtrack of faith. They are on our playlist, and some of them we sing in the season of Advent and Christmas. Right? We sang one last week, Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. And if you turn to your hymnals to 123. It came upon the midnight clear. Let's sing verse 4 together. This is a song in our playlist. Like Mary's song. Thanks, David. <laughs> I didn't warn him.
just one, one of the songs on our playlist that speak about the difficulties of life and how we might find rest in God. Once again, Professor Caroline Lewis encourages us, though, to start with Mary's song. She says, I haven't seen much mercy lately, have you? And it's just getting worse every single day. There are many ways that we might respond to religious rejection, prejudice, fanaticism, narrowness, and bigotry. There are many principles, many mantras, many Bible verses that would suffice to articulate God's ways when the ways of the world seem to have taken over. But this week, what difference would it make if our starting point were mercy? If we sang Mary's song, a song to sing instead of talk of indifference and intolerance, a song to sing instead of speaking words of hate and fear, a song to sing instead of closed mouths, unwilling to speak up for or speak out against, Mary's song would make our world a different place, a better place, a place where we might even catch a glimpse of the kingdom of God. I believe now more than ever, we need to add songs to our playlist that speak of God's love and mercy and power to change the world, to be the kind of place where all people are valued, where the privileges of the few become the rights of all, where fear of sharing what you have so that all may have some gives way to a new generosity where all have enough and no one goes away empty. So what would be the songs you would add to our playlist of faith? We need songs like the one Mary sings. And Mary's song is a good place to start. But if we are to live lives of faithfulness to Christ, then Mary's song is only the beginning. May the songs we sing be as prophetic and powerful and true as this one that Mary sang so long ago. Amen. Amen. <laughs>